Welcome to this week's edition of World Crisis Radio. This is Webster Tarpley speaking from Washington, D.C. We tried to make some technical improvements this week, hoping for the best. Uh, and let's see what happens. Now, this is the program being recorded on August 1st, the afternoon of August 1st. And, of course, we're passing through the anniversaries of the beginning of World War One. And in, I would point in particular to the anniversary yesterday, the assassination of the great French socialist leader Jean Jaurès, J-A-U-R-E-S, with a little accent on the last E. And he was assassinated 100 years ago yesterday as he was organizing a general strike and this was a general strike against war the entire socialist international had pledged that if the imperialist finance bourgeoisie started a world war that uh, they would stop them in their tracks with a general strike and the one significant leader, the most prominent leader of the Second International who attempted to make good on that pledge was Jean Jaurès. So he is a hero for us from many points of view. Maybe we can give you some quotes from some of his great speeches. I'll certainly try to in the final segment. But uh, he was he was organizing that general strike. And that reminds us, if something's going on you really don't like, uh, you got to consider – a general strike as the possible answer. And uh, on the other hand, there's no good calling for a general strike left and right. you got to have some reasonable hope that it's going to be carried out. Right? Although sometimes you just have to have to do it. All right. Um, we have to, first of all, address this question of the Ukrainian false flag warnings. And this comes from Commander Strelkov of the Donetsk People's Republic, uh, DNR, Donetskaya Narodnaya Respublik, I guess. Um, and they're talking about plans being matured by the Kiev fascist clique for a large, stunning false flag operation. One of the reasons they do this, and I, I've been aware of this for many years for other you know, constructive political purposes, but July and August are the months when the news flow declines and you can get the mass media to cover things, especially in Europe and especially in France, Italy, Spain, Portugal, Bavaria, these areas where August 15th, everything shuts down as uh, more, more than any other time of the year, this is when you can get stories covered. And remember, the Guta fraud was a year ago, right? The fake NATO false flag attempt to blame chemical weapons on the Assad government of Syria. That's last August. And now we're going into that danger zone of false flag season we might say uh, the year before, of course, it was the attempted coup d'etat by Ben Rhodes and company using television as well as bombs to try to overthrow Assad with a decapitating strike. Well, it turned out that the modern state in the form of Syria was stronger than these imperial attempts. Right. The, mo the modern state is stronger than the empire. That has been, I think, shown in uh, in wars, <laughs> but now um, you can see what, what we're going into. So here's the point. Strelkov and company have had a press conference, and the most uh, detailed I have here in German, commanders of the Donetsk People's Republic warn about a uh, an imminent in, uh, orchestrated faked terror attack by the Kiev fascist clique, the Secret Service of the People's Republic of Donetsk has, has told the political leaders there that the Ukrainian army is preparing a big time provocation. The goal of the provocation is to uh, to 
stamp the Donetsk People's Republic as a terrorist organization and attempt to blame it for the killing of the civilian population. And this time they've come up with an idea goes beyond their phosphorus bombs that they have been using. It goes beyond the ballistic missiles that the Kiev fascist clique has been firing. Uh, and it's going to be something like this. Um, a, a rocket attack uh, on uh, – it will be rocket attacks, rocket ballistic missiles with uh, uh, the goal of attacking – the uh, water treatment plants and other facilities where chemicals are stored in Donetsk and Lugansk. And the specific is in uh, one of the water uh, treatment plants in Donetsk, there is about 120 tons of chlorine and then another one, 160 tons of chlorine. Another possible target is a uh, chemical facility with ammonia uh, present, and that is in Golovka. And the idea is that there will be these ballistic missile attacks and then a p propaganda campaign to discredit the People's Republic of Donetsk and to try to implicate the separatist uh, militia. Uh, these are, of course, uh, atrocities that will be done by the Ukrainian army, in effect, against the civilian population and then the, the this announcement goes into the question of which way will the wind be blowing as the chlorine cloud comes back down then um it's got a uh, large uh area it's got a large radius of uh, of uh, effect and uh most forms of life or all forms of life will tend to die in that uh area tens of thousands of people can die and uh, maybe more depending on which way the wind is actually uh, blowing. So uh, he stresses that the militia of the Donetsk People's Republic and the People's Republic of Lugansk will not carry out any terror attacks against their own population, not against the Ukrainian troops, not against uh Anybody as long and their their main goal is to uh, protect the civilian population from these uh, from these effects. So this is now a false flag alert, and it comes from Colonel Igor Girkin and uh, and also from uh, from uh, Strelkov. Now let's talk a little bit also about some other details. There are fragmentary reports of this on the uh, Internet. Um, the, uh, the resistance, uh, the anti-Kiev uh, groups, have received information that in the next few days, Kiev neo-Nazis are planning a terrorist act, one or several, in the large cities of Ukraine. Now, this is slightly different. This is that they're going to do a uh, an own goal, right? An eigentor, an autorete in the western part, maybe in Lvov, uh, and then blame that on the Russians and their separatist uh, separatist friends. So the resistance received information that in the next few days the neo Nazis are planning a terrorist act in large cities of Ukraine. Avakov and um, his deputy, Abakov is the interior minister of the, of the uh, Kiev uh, clique, during recent days have already provided informational cover-up for these actions. The minimum goal is to impose a total dictatorship over Ukraine, pretending it was Russia implementing the terrorist attacks. The optimal goal adds invasion of Ukraine by Polish, Lithuanian, and possibly other NATO troops. We'll be back in a minute. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. It's uh, August 1st, 2014, a hundred years since Germany declared war on Russia and France and Germany mobilized and uh, Italy declared neutrality. That's a hundred years ago at the beginning of World War I. And this is the heavy duty stuff actually began today, although the Russian mobilization had been going also on the uh, ordered on the 30th and then uh, implemented on the 31st. 
So we're looking at these two classes of possible false flag, right? One is the Ukrainian forces, the Soldateska, fire a ballistic missile at these chlorine or ammonia deposits in the eastern cities. Another one is an operation supposedly called Spalahu Diembrievi. Spalahu Diembrievi. Uh, we'll check what that might mean. Uh, a, a SBU, a Ukrainian KGB major, calling himself Alexei Nikonov, uh, who is uh, part of this ruling clique. Uh, and the idea is that they want to have a a, a false flag on their own territory, like stock fire uh, equivalent, and um, and then blame that on the eastern Ukrainians and of course on on uh, on Russia. So that combination is uh, extremely dangerous, and you got to inoculate people. And I, I would stress all of those who gave energy, time, gave up their substance. In other words. In the 9-11 truth movement, now is the possible payoff of this. In other words, what we're going to find out possibly here is how much skepticism, how much sophistication and intelligence we've been able to inculcate into the U.S. population, European and other populations concerning this mother of all false flags. So far, the 9-11 fraud, September 11, 2001, uh, have we done our work? Have we built it better than we knew or not so good as we had hoped? So we're going to we're going to find that out. But don't believe it. In other words, everybody brace yourself because we are now going into this territory. And remember that the goal of a lot of this stuff is it's not so much triggered by anything in Ukraine. I mean, obviously, there are things going on in Ukraine. One is that the the government is tending to fall apart, right? Yatsenyuk, the great IMF uh, uh, austerity shock therapy enforcer, Yatsenyuk has uh, been voted out, but they won't. Uh, uh, Turchinov and uh, and Porno Pornoshenko. Uh, Pornoshenko won't accept his resignation, so they want him in there. Of course, he was the darling of uh, Madame Newland. And um, then um, the other side of it is, of course, that the, the Ukrainian armed forces are having a hell of a time. They got desertions. They've got um, a, a member of the Kiev Rada of the fascist clique had gone to, I think, even Western Ukraine and uh, tried to recruit people into the uh, military, and they um, they treated him rather roughly. I think they beat him up. So um, that's uh, interesting. So they got all kinds of problems. And the political crisis, of course, is that the IMF shock therapy is now beginning to bite. So there are plenty of reasons on the ground. But the big one is the BRICS bank. It is this idea that for the first time since 1944 – there is an alternative game in town. It's not just the Anglo-Americans and their crushing neoliberal and libertarian uh, Washington consensus conditionalities. Now you've also got the possibility of other uh, other things, right? The BRICS Bank is the other thing. And we got, we've got to switch in just a second to um, to the big picture on this. But this a, a, a false flag of this size – in uh, in Ukraine is going to be the goal of it is going to be to try to stabilize this rotten international financial system and of course the New York courts that um, that play along with it. But let's just look at a couple of other things. Um, so Kiev has these ballistic missiles. That's well known, sort of short range. Uh, their fighting is is uh, continuing. The Ki- a Kiev uh, convoy was ambushed overnight by the pro-Russian uh, forces, uh, and uh, we have 
the uh, the big lie campaign continues, right? The BBC had posted some um, eyewitness reports, right? Uh, people in the vicinity who had seen the crash of the Malaysian MH17 airliner and talked about one or two fighter jets in the vicinity flying right underneath. And uh, that has now been sanitized. It's been taken away. And, of course, uh, I want to direct you once again to my Twitter page, tarpley.net. And there you're going to find that uh, a German pilot has come up with an, uh, an, an analysis of the crash site. Right? It's essentially based on uh, one picture in particular, and it's uh, the the picture is uh, you can see it on my uh, Twitter feed there, and it, what it shows is that the outer skin of the fuselage in the cockpit area shows entry holes of what is thought what are thought to have been thirty millimeter cannon slugs. Now those can be explosive slugs or they can be shrapnel slugs um and you can see there's a you can make a case that some of them are going in right the jagged edges are pushed inside the fuselage in other cases the jagged edges are coming from outside the fuselage indicating that it could be a uh, uh shots slugs that were fired through the fuselage and are coming now out the other side so there's a, a significant um argument now against the official version once again and uh we've also got a uh, an official of the former german uh, east german army die nationale volksarmee yes a colonel from the nva nva he says that he knows all about book sam 11 and so forth because he used them and if they hit a plane the entire plane bursts into flames because of the huge uh, impact inside uh, the, the cabin and the fuselage and so forth. And that does not seem to have been the case here. In other words, a, a high altitude fire and a total explosion of everything. That doesn't seem to be the, uh, the case here. So back in a minute on World Crisis Radio. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. And we're very much uh, on the brink. A hundred years after the outbreak of World War I, People have learned precious little. Now, uh, a couple of other aspects on this Ukrainian story. Oh, the British ambassador here in Washington is engaging in conduct which is clearly incompatible with his diplomatic status, and he's got to be essentially uh, PNG. He's got to be declared persona non grata right? he's got to be told get out what you're doing is unacceptable and you are interfering with um, you know normal relations of the united states with other uh countries and what's this character's name we're going to get him in a minute if we can uh, if we can find him in the notes but you uh you get the idea. Uh, he went on MSNBC and talked about Putin. He's a liar. He's the thug. Well, that's that's uh, you're just supposed to be a diplomat. That's not your job. If you want to do that, go home to Great Britain and uh, and promote war there. But don't try to drag the American people into war by using MSNBC as your soapbox. Peter Westman Westmacott. W-E-S-T-M-A-C-O-T-T. There it is. Let's see. It's been retweeted uh, 25 times. Um, PNG, this guy, persona non grata, a thug and a liar, uh, which I think that's also the headline of the um, of the uh, <laughs> the London Economist, right? A web of lies. <laughs> OK, so get rid of him. Uh, it is interesting that the traditional 19th century opposition, that the most virulent hatred of Russia comes from the British. And I hope our Russian friends take note of that, right? The most incorrigible Russia haters are indeed 
the um, British. So, National Public Radio this morning on the Diane Reem Show, they were telling us nobody doubts the essential NATO narrative that the Malaysian airliner was shot down by a surface-to-air missile in the hands of the rebels, but probably supplied by Russia. Well, I'm sorry, I don't believe it. I'm somebody, I think, and I don't believe it. And when you hear these, when you hear oligarchs saying nobody wants and everybody knows, you know that they are oligarchs and they are lying. Now, 